Hello and welcome to this lecture on the evolution of immunology. Considering the evolution of immunology needs to look at various aspects about molecules as well as cells of the immune system that have first appeared in the animal kingdom or so to say even the plant kingdom. We all know that animals even for that matter insects have some sort of primitive way by which they respond to external pathogens or infections. In fact, even plants can be infected by viruses and plants have their own way of responding to various kinds of fungal uh, infections. So, if we look at the animal kingdom, we realize that the infection is universal in the biological world and all members of the animal kingdom must have therefore, evolved some sort of prote protection mechanisms in order to stay alive. Now, these protection mechanisms may have different ways and they may work differently in different organisms and various phyla and different strategies may be employed for inactivating the pathogen in question. It is obvious that during these evolutionary studies a complete phylogenic study of all the members to see what sort of mechanisms or what sort of molecules immune molecules are involved is practically impossible. Therefore, representatives of phyla are studied in order to detect analogies and homologies in the elements of the immune system that may be operating in that particular organism or animal. Obviously, we all know that the immune system has got a variety of important elements and aspects to it and some of them are the specificity of the immune system or the specificity of the response to the incoming pathogen or incoming antigen as well as the establishment of memory are very important aspects to say that the immune system is competitive as we know it in the mammalian world. Needless to say the concept of self and non self recognition is also very important as in uh, and is in fact seen very very early in evolution. As mentioned in previous classes the distinction between self and non self is very evident in earthworms where a graft exchange gives results similar to the graft rejection reactions seen in higher mammals. For example, if we take a piece of skin from one locality on the earthworm, one locality where earthworms are found and graft it on to earthworms obtained from a different locality, there ensues a kind of a rejection reaction as opposed to the acceptance of that skin graft within earthworms obtained from the same locality. Other examples that were described earlier was this hermit crab and corals, where what we realize in all these studies is that as organisms or cells became multicellular, there came a need to distinguish between self, cells belonging to one colony and if cells from another colony is actually invading it. If this distinction was not there, then different cells or different organisms could come and invade different kinds of multicellular organisms and, and the identity of each one of these different kinds of multicellular colonies would be lost. And therefore, we see that this sort of self non self recognition is very evident even in polyps in corals. These are, these are reactions that abound in the animal kingdom as you will see the distinction between self and non self actually arose very early on in the in the in the animal kingdom and this distinction between self and non self 
actually is due to the evolution of molecules or protein molecules or receptors that are expressed on the surface of cells that are in question. So, if you go on into some more aspects of the immune system that we have studied, we find that there are two parts to it that is the innate or the non specific immunity and the acquired or the specific immunity. Innate being those that are obtained or got when you are born and therefore, involves a variety of strategies or mechanisms and cells involving macrophages, which was first discovered and thought to uh, provide a protection against um, a thorn or those cells that surrounded the thorn and tried to remove the thorn from the starfish larva. So, you see there are a variety of molecules that are involved in this innate immune system such as complement molecules, lysozyme and various kinds of cytokines and various kinds of molecules that cause chemotaxis of these macrophages. And considering the cellular immune system, you also have a humoral immune system and therefore, this humoral immune system consisting of various kinds of molecules. So, therefore, when one looks at evolution, you have to look at a variety of aspects as to what sort of molecules or cells began very early on in, in evolution. So, just to recapitulate a few things, what are those what are those aspects that we need to consider when we study evolution. First of all, you have to look at you have to look at whether the immune system has got cells as we know it in the mammalian system cells and organs of the immune system. So, what are these organs? Organs are of course, the lymph nodes and various kinds of other secondary and primary lymphoid organs. And then of course, you have the molecules that are involved in immune recognition such as the MHC itself, the major histocompatibility complex which is the basis for all immune reactions in mammalian systems and also for that matter the, the rejection of skin grafts and the recognition between self and non-self. So, the question is whether MHC is evident early on in evolution. And then of course, what is adaptive immunity? Adaptive immunity is characterized by the presence of a variety of, a variety of aspects such as diversity, which means to say or indicates that the multitude of pathogenic infections or multitude of antigens that the immune system gets exposed to in mammalian organisms always find a, res a befitting response where you get molecules that are equally diverse that can combine with these incoming antigens or pathogens such as the immunoglobulin molecules. This diversity of course, is brought about by a rearranging gene system, where you have different genes recombining to give you the variable segment of the immunoglobulin protein molecule. Just to cut a few things short and to make it make things of this lecture interesting, it is very surprising or very interesting to find that such recombining antigens, where you have diversity is found also very early in evolution. So, this diversification is not something very unique to us or higher mammals. It is present even in lower organisms such as you have Drosophila, you have uh, jawless uh, uh, vertebrates, Agnatha. So, you see all these this sort of diversification has actually evolved very early on in evolution. Then of course, apart from the diversity, you have the participation of what are called as T and B cells. And most importantly, the establishment of memory, which gives an infected person the ability to respond to primary infections in a more rapid manner. 
A familiar example being those who have recovered from smallpox never ever come down with smallpox and that is because of the establishment of what are called as memory cells. So, with regard to all these aspects various studies have been done to find out if the cells that we know of in the in the mammalian immune system is present early on in evolution and the presence or absence of different kinds of lymph nodes, the presence or absence of MHC or MHC like molecules and of course, the presence of immunoglobulin molecules. One of the important things about immunoglobulin molecules is that it has a very characteristic domain or what you call as the immunoglobulin fold which is a familiar feature that you must have come across in a variety of sub subjects or topics that you have dealt with in the immune system. A vast variety of molecules both within and outside of the immune system belong to what you call as the immunoglobulin superfamily of molecules. So, if you have the immunoglobulin fold in these early molecules then they are actually related to the immunoglobulin molecule. So, let us see how and what sort of studies were done in order to show some of these interesting aspects about evolution of the immune system. So, when you look at the immune system, one searches for specific memory, whether memory is present or absent and where actually memory is present in what sort of organisms, because that is the hallmark of a very efficient adaptive immune system. Then you analyze the pattern of allo reactivities for genetic basis. Allo reactivities may occur without any relationship to, to a genetic uh, criteria. In other words, the major histocompatibility complex was discovered because there was as seen in those studies that there was a genetic basis to these graft rejection reactions. One sees that in, in um, primitive, uh, primitive um, organisms like sponges and others you do find graft rejection, but those graft rejection mechanisms need not be centered around molecules that have a genetic basis. Then of course, one, once one has evidence of proteins that are participating in some sort of immune system in the early organisms or early evolution, you look at direct structural comparisons of proteins that you isolate from these organisms. Then you have of course, cross hybridization studies using different kinds of uh, DNA probes and using PCR degenerate oligonucleotide primers in order to find out whether there are any sequences that are similar in the DNA or genome of these organisms compared to what we have in higher mammals. And of course, one of the most important study is to take the antibodies that have been raised to various kinds of molecules in the higher, higher mammalian immune system and see whether you can uh, have cross reactivity to antigens that exist early on in evolution or animals uh, in, in insects and so on and so forth. So, covering both invert, invertebrates and vertebrates, one sees that the, in, the early on in evolution the presence of an adaptive immune system or AIS, you will see this abbreviation coming up in many of the textbooks. This AIS is not present or not very efficient in the early organisms. This has been replaced by a kind of diversification or a more extensive innate immune system which involves what are called as pathogen recognition receptors. So, this all of you have heard about and this these pat, pattern recognition receptors are those receptors that actually recognize the presence of a pattern on or, or a kind of a pattern in incoming pathogenic molecules or pathogens. A familiar example is the toll like receptors. This toll molecule or the toll uh, protein uh, was first discovered in Drosophila while trying to study the embryogenesis in Drosophila. Later on of course, they found that 
this molecule has similar or homologous molecules they called it toll like receptors which are present in higher organisms and there are various kinds of TLRs from 1 to 10 which play a very important role in innate immunity towards incoming uh, molecules or different kinds of pathogenic uh, protein molecules. Then of course, you have what are called as nod like receptors and scavenger receptors early on in evolution. These are present throughout or uh, very, very well dispersed in the animal kingdom. Now, early on also there is uh, this variation or variable region that is, sub, that is present in the immunoglobulin molecule has an equivalent which is called as the VCB piece which is the variable region containing gene family of chitin binding proteins. Now, since many of these cells are invaded by pathogens or uh, different kinds of organisms which are rich in chitin they have evolved a kind of a protein uh, immune protein system where they uh, inculcate the phenomena of variability into these kind of proteins. There are several examples and we will go through that uh, in a little while. Now, this variable region containing gene family of chitin binding proteins is present in amphioxus. Now, as you go on in invertebrates you find the presence of antimicrobial or antibacterial peptides that are synthesized in response to uh, bacterial infections. For example, in, um, uh, in amphibia and in insects, uh, in infection in insects is accompanied by an induction of the secretion of various kinds of antimicrobial uh, peptides called as defensins. There are various other kinds of names to this we will come to as we go on in the lecture. So, these are antimicrobial peptides which can inhibit the replication or growth of bacteria. Now, these are present both in plants as well as in animals. So, these are these have been ascribed to be the earliest form of defense. Now, apart from proteins that have evolved early on receptors that recognize pathogens because there has to be a recognition of the pathogen if the pathogen can induce an anti pathogenic response be it in very early animals. These receptors also cause such peptides to be released and these are also should have should have evolved very early on to defend that particular organism against infections. So, you see the presence of not only antibacterial or antipathogenic peptide proteins you also have receptors that can recognize the incoming pathogen. And these are of course, present very early on as I told you early, early even, even in insects. For example, toll receptors in drosophila they are used to defend against a various, various kinds of infections such as gram positive and fungal pathogens and they have found as expected that mutations in these toll receptors actually had an effect on the production of anti -micro microbial peptide called as drosom drosomycin into the hemolymph of, uh, of these insects. And therefore, came the connection that because antimicrobial peptides are being inhibited when this toll receptor is being mutated they said it has a function apart from embryogenesis and then it became very clear even in invertebrates that these toll receptors play a role in uh, microbial defense. Now, the toll actually does not bind to gram negative organisms in, in drosophila, but instead it has another mechanism called as the IMD or Im IMD stands for immunodeficiency pathway. This pathway has receptors for gram negative bacteria and it is similar to the tumor necrosis factor receptor pathway in higher mammals. So, you see there is a lot of comparison and it seems as if this sort of me mechanism to evolve both the adaptive as well as the innate immune system has its roots very, very early on in, 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 in evolution and it has been perfected, diversified and uh, more complex things were added as evolution took place. The end result of all of these pathways of course, is the activation of transcriptional factors which activate 
various kinds of genes that in in early or primitive like in insects is the is the induction of the secretion or induction of genes that will give rise to these antimicrobial peptides or proteins. Whereas, in higher mammals you have the induction of a variety of cytokines that will combat or activate phagocytose to phagocytose different kinds of bacteria. Now, in the insects a very similar system that is that is more homologous to the NF kappa B pathway is also family is also present in these in, in drosophila and these belong to the rel family as evidenced by uh, looking at the structure of these various kinds of molecules that are they are homologous. In addition to that you have other kinds of proteins called as peptidoglycan recognition proteins PGRP in insects for the recognition of gram positive bacteria because these bacteria have, have expressed the peptid, peptidoglycan. Also gram negative binding proteins, gram negative bacterial binding proteins called as GNBP, they, they bind to beta 1 3 linked glucans. So, you see many of these pathogens that harbor or is of whose structure is made up of these glucans as well as this peptidoglycan has kind of proteins that can bind to these to these bacteria. The whole idea being that when an infection occurs these proteins can bind to these bacterial proteins and kind of agglutinate them or precipitate them and then keep them in one place and make a cyst around it and enclose them. So, that they do not go on causing infection within the insect or within the hemolymph. So, going further C 3 or complement system which is a very important pathway in higher mammals is also present in different kinds of early early organisms like drosophila as well as horseshoe crabs. Now, the reason why drosophila comes up again and again is that as I told you it is very impossible for one to do studies on all these different kinds of complicated um, experiments in all kinds of animals throughout the animal kingdom. So, they are done in representative um, individuals and you find that the many many of these results are actually true for other kinds of insects as well like for example, lot of studies have been done even in mosquitoes. So, you see C 3 3 is a component of complement that is the third component that gets activated in the complement cascade and the complement cascade is is involved in, in higher mammals to punch a hole into the infecting organism and C 3 is the third component. So, these three C 3 homologs are present in these insects and the interesting or the most important point is that these are all containing thioester bonds. These thioester bonds have the ability to chemically or covalently conjugate to var various kinds of proteins and therefore, these are called as TEPs they can covalently bind to antigens and they found that there are different kinds of these proteins and TEP 1 is one such protein that plays a role in anopheles. Now, in the anopheles hemolymph there are cells that phagocytose gram negative bacteria. So, they found that this TEP 1 by binding covalently to the incoming pathogen plays a role in phagocytosis of gram negative bacteria. So, in other words it is something similar to opsonization that you find in higher mammals, where macrophages are activated to pathogens that are coated with these complement components. Other molecules like phycolin is a new pathway a different kind of complement activation pathway that is found in eurochordates. It is related to malinian, mammalian collectin molecules. There is another very important um, family of molecules as I told you now you see these are the immunoglobulin super family member which means that these are having the immunoglobulin fold and these are secreted by the fat body cells and hemocytes in drosophila. Hemocytes are cells that are present in the hemolymph of drosophila. So, this is called as the down syndrome cell addition molecule or DSCAM. Now, the important thing about this particular molecule is that the protein itself has 10 immunoglobulin domains. So, like what you have in the immunoglobulin uh, IgG molecule you have different domains. So, it has such domains 10 of them, but the gene encoding it has several alternative exons. 
like we have different kinds of genes in the in the variable there are several variable region genes both in the TCR as well as immunoglobulin uh, uh, gene gene in the gene rearrangement pathway. Here you have different alternate exons. Now, these each one of these exons are chosen at random in order to improve the diversity of this molecule. In other words from a single drosophila you find that there are several such DS cam molecules that are having these immunoglobulin folds, but have having a different alternate exon. And therefore, you have 38 different 38,000 different kinds of protein isoforms, something similar to your variable re, uh, gene, uh, gene rearrangement in immunoglobulin molecules. The mechanism of course, is still not clear. And it has been found that hemocytes that lack this DS cam molecule and therefore, something similar to lacking immunoglobulins or having a deficiency in various kinds of uh, immunoglobulin molecules like IgG deficiency, IgA deficiency and so on. These molecules if they are lack, lacking in Drosophila, they cannot phagocytose E. coli. So, there was there is a kind of a relationship. Similar such molecules such as FREPS or fibrinogen related protein molecules is found in freshwater, freshwater uh, snail, where this diversification does not happen because of alternative exons, but it happens because of somatic hypermutation that is found in higher mammals when IgG matures to form uh, molecules or IgG molecules that have higher affinity. So, surprising is not it that such different kinds of uh, early, early on uh, animals have such kind of advanced mechanisms that are similar that is found in, in, in mammalian immune system. Yet of course, many of these molecules are not as perfect and they do not do their job as perfectly as what happens in, in mammalian organisms. Now, let us go into the elements of the immune system and then find out what are the important aspects that have happened during evolution in order to make the mammalian immune system or the mammalian immunoglobulin molecule so perfect. So, going into these elements you find that in porifera you find that uh, polymorphic cell surface determinants actually lead to the recognition and rejection reactions as I told you earlier that there are cell surface molecules and they are polymorphic. The polymorphism of course, is, uh, is not as extensive as what you find in MHC molecules in mammals. Now, these are involved in barrier formation associated with a cell called as cholencyte uh, mediated reactions in porifera or sponges. Now, the rejection reaction associated uh, is also associated with infiltration of grafted tissue by sites, uh, cells called as archaeocytes. Something similar to what happens in graft rejection reactions where T cells actually go and infiltrate or inflammatory cells go and infiltrate into the allograft and therefore, cutting the allograft circulation and uh, 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 rejecting the allograft. Similar such Mm, function is actually mediated by these primitive cells called as archaeocytes. Nidaria, uh, they, they can they have allo recognition, they also have xeno recognition. If you know what is allo and what is xeno from the earlier earlier immunological lectures and there, there are killing mechanisms something similar to what happens with cytotoxic killer cells in higher mammals. They are seen in hydrozones and anthozoans. Also, as you go on further, you find that of course, this allo rejection, allo rejection phenomena as well as uh, graft rejection or acceptance is not uniformly seen in all members of a phylum or class. So, some of them do not observe allografts, but they observe xenografts, the mechanism for which has not been yet worked out because of obvious difficulties in doing such studies with such, uh, such dif difficult organisms. Memory and specialized cell populations called immunocytes are actually recruited within these organisms. In arthropoda, you find graft rejection reactions are not very clear cut. That means, graft rejections you cannot really pin down and say it actually happens in various kinds of arthropod um, uh, members. There are of course, antibacterial factors which is the major major important role uh, or important mechanism by which they combat organisms. And there is a lot of experiments that have been done with bee venom and snake venom. They inject snake venom and bee venom into uh, cockroaches or other kinds of arthropods in order to see what sort of mechanism is, is, is put into action. 
in mollusca in, in mollusca there is no allograft rejection that has been reported and cells and molecules act as effectors against chemical stimuli. So, if you give chemical haptons or inject chemical haptons into mollusks, you do find some sort of a reaction where certain kinds of um, cells called as hemocytes, they actually play some role in they get induced and they play a role uh, in encapsulation of bacteria or these foreign material as found in early on in evolution. By the way, if you remember that in even in bacteriophage infection of bacteria, you find the phenomena of restricting DNA, which is actually a, can be considered as an immune mechanism that has evolved early on in bacteria in order to cut up the bacteriophage that are infecting into the, bac, into the bacteria. Similarly, like, like you have the presence of lysozyme, lysozyme is required to uh, lyse bacteria that is why it is called as lysozyme. So, you find that non immunoglobulin superfamily members such as this lysozyme, bactericidin and bacterial agglutinins, these play a very important role in mollusks. And important to say thigh 1 which is present in the thymus or on the brain cells is actually found in squid brains. Then going on to annelida, you find that there is some sort of graft rejection has been demonstrated here and this is actually mediated by coelomocytes and they have some sort of a short term specific memory. In other words, if you take the same skin graft and again graft it to the same earthworm, there is a somewhat accelerated rejection in terms of time. So, there are certain kinds of cells that are rich in acid phosphatases and lysozymes. Now, when you come to echinodermata where you have like sea stars and sea urchins, now you find the early presence of what are called as RAG1 and RAG2, which I will go to a little more in detail in, in, in the coming slides. So, these are the first organisms where RAG1 and RAG2 like genes are present within the genome of you know, sea stars and sea urchins. Just like mammalian cells proliferate in response to cornea, these cells coelomocytes that are obtained from uh, sea urchins also uh, uh, proliferate when you add cornea to them which means that cornea has corresponding receptors on these coelomocytes. LPS which is a very important ligand for toll receptors also activates coelomocytes in earthworms. And for the first time you find that IL like activity IL 1 is a cytokine is an interleukin that has been found or plays a very important role in higher mammals and that is found uh, very early on in sea urchins or IL 1 like molecules. Protochordates, urochordates and cephalochordates, these are they have colony specificity like you must have heard about the acidians. These colony specificity or rejection reactions now in, at this point in evolution seems to come across as being under genetic control. So, perhaps the first evidence where MHC like molecules may be playing a role. And of course, you have these chitin binding proteins which are the early forerunners for the non rearranging T cell receptor or the B cell receptors. Now, going on further looking at the elements of this immune system of both non Ig as well as Ig super family of proteins, you find that in mollusks, orthopods as well as in chordates, lectin or lectin family of molecules, they play a very important role in agglutinating cells and precipitating glycoconjugates, especially in insects. They form a family of proteins that are inducible by bacterial infection or injection of bacteria into the hemolymph of well, let us say for example, Drosophila and they are related to the mammalian acute phase response or acute phase proteins. For example, in limulus, the it produces uh, a protein called as limulin and tunicates produce lectins that are similar to human uh, C reactive protein. And of course, defensive there are different types of defensins which are antimicrobial in nature and other kinds of antimicrobial uh, proteins or peptides are sacropin and then you, you these are all proteins or peptide isolated from the hemolymph. Defensins with similar structure when they have looked at uh, structure after crystallizing these molecule they found that it is similar even in plants. Of course, with some variations they are not exactly similar. These act on a variety of gram negative bacteria. 
Remember there are different types of defensins. So, therefore, different types of bacteria could be combated with. Other molecules of antibacterial nature are sarcotoxins, attachins and deterrescins. These all seem to have hydrophobic stretches that act as a wedge into the bacterial membranes and that is how they inactivate the bacteria. So, then coming on to immunoglobulin superfamily of molecules, you find that silkworm larvae, the familiar silkworm that we, uh, that we, are, that we know of uh, making silk, these larvae they produce a molecule called as hemolin. This upon injection of bacteria and of course, infection of silkworms is a very important thing for the silk industry and they have worked on these silkworm larvae and they found that this hemolin, hemolin is actually secreted upon infection of, uh, with bacteria and this gene actually consists of 4 C 2 immunoglobulin like domains. So, like you have the C 2 is a domain that is present in the IgG molecule similar such 4 of these domains are present in this hemolin therefore, making it a member of the immunoglobulin super family. It is rich in beta, beta pleated sheets and they have intra domain cysteines which are characteristic of the immunoglobulin fold. So, this gene shows structural homology with other immunoglobulin super family of members in insects amalgam such as amalgam, fasciculin 2 and twitchin. The latter molecules are related to the neural cell adhesion molecules of vertebrates. You see what is the, the different kinds of uh, connections that you find in these protein molecules and the analysis that has gone on to prove, but that perhaps that many of the cell adhesion molecules that play a role in trafficking of, lymph, of lymphocytes to lymph nodes actually arose very early on in evolution. The presence of such members or even in metazoa suggests that the dom that this immunoglobulin domain actually evolved very very early before the differentiation between acylomates and coelomates coelomates and acylomates uh, something related to the coelomic cavity that has arose during evolution but the important point to take home about all these things although they are all belonging to the immunoglobulin superfamily of molecules these molecules that are present in these early animals or invertebrates, they do not show gene rearrangements. So, it is not something similar to what happens with antibody molecules. Then of course, going on to the ignata, which are characterized by hackfishes and, and lampreys. So, these there you have antibody responses, they can respond to sheep red blood cells, keyhole limpet hemocyanin or injection of human red blood cells and of course, by bacteriophages and you find that these kind of antibody proteins or antibody like proteins they are all against the streptococcal anti group A. So, they are anti carbohydrate, anti rhamnose, anti uh, N acetyl glucose amine kind of uh, reactive antibodies. Now, all of these are related to C 3 complement and it has been found that lampreys have actually plasma cells. Plasma cells uh, something similar to plasma cells or the differentiated uh, B lymphocyte that starts to make or secrete large quantities of immunoglobulin molecules. In glathostomata, for example, chondrites, for examples being sharks, uh, sharks have a, a very good immune system, they mount antibody responses even to hapten, but they have a limited aff affinity and the diversification is not there as well as affinity ma maturation that happens in higher mammals is kind of limited. In, in, bony, in bony fishes, you have carps and trouts, they mount an IgM response. This is a tetramer in, in carps, but is a pentamer in many other kinds of teleosti. And of course, they respond to uh, 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 various kinds of drugs like haptans, like you know molecule like penicillin, dinitrophenyl hapten. So, when you come to amphibia, Primitive urodeals mount only IgM responses, they do not have the other kinds of immunoglobulin molecules, but enurans like rana, you know, xenopus you know, frogs have a better diversity. Now, of course, coming on to reptiles and birds, they have a more, uh, more advanced system immune system, but their diversity is lower compared to the mammalian immune system. Now, going on further, some of the important features you find that there is a molecule called as IgW 
which is related to IgD with the, these are IgD in mammals in mammalian B cell these are present in bony fishes and frogs. In fact, this IgW is found on granulocytes and because of these studies that they found that IgW was related to IgD they found that IgD is actually a membrane molecule in human by, by basophils. So, you see how these studies were helped or became possible because they found that IgW was found in gran granulocytes in frogs and they, they were similar to IgD molecule. Similarly, you have different kinds of like for example, those molecules that do not have a light chain uh, a two heavy chain containing molecule called as IgY which all of you know about. So, these are present in, uh, in Xenopus and these are supposed to be thymus dependent molecules and IgX which is the forerunner for IgA was supposed to be a thymus independent kind of antigen. And of course, in all of these for example, in sharks there is a systematic lack of octomer motifs which we will come to a little later on during the gene rearrangement that occurs in immunoglobulin molecules. The J region is conserved and not having different kinds of uh, gene segments during the uh, immunoglobulin gene rearrangement. So, you see several such features are there which I will not go into for the lack of time, but you can browse through in these slides. Now, going on further the MHC. Now, MHC MLR is present in many of these they start to they start to show their present in Ignata and the MLR mixed lymphocyte reactions the electronic graft rejection in, is seen in chondritis and elasmobronchi. Now, in teleosti you have MLR graft rejection antigen presentation intracellular antigen processing class 1 and class 2 genes have been isolated by immunoprecipitation. And of course, you have beta 2 gene beta 2 microglobulin genes have been found by two dimensional gel electrophoresis C 4 or complement 4 component was MHC linked in, in amphibia. So, like this uh, several such studies have been uh, going on into various kinds of uh, different kinds of organisms and when you looked at the lymphoid uh, system you find that the GALT is present in cyclosomata and these are all specialized the gut associated lymphoid system. So, you see how these lymph nodes or specialized types of uh, lymphocyte containing um, uh, organs are coming into place in evolution. So, you see GALT, bone marrow, spleen and thymus is present in amphibia, but the bone marrow is not known in um, earlier amphibia like urodeals. And then of course, as you go on to reptilia, aves and birds you have all these different kinds of uh, lymph nodes that are present. Now, what is that now what is the very important thing that we need to take home during this evolutionary lecture. This, this actually was discovered by the discovery of a phenomena or a kind of a, a gene system that, that is present which was thought not to be present in earlier organisms. because the T cell receptor and the B cell receptor are molecules that rearrange. So, it was thought that this rearranging system was not present in primitive animals, but they found such a rearranging system in lampreys and hagfishes. These they do not have the spleen or thymus, but they do respond to various different kinds of antigens by producing specific agglutinins. They also do not possess MHC they do not have the B cell receptor or the T cell receptor as we know it in higher mammals, but they have an alternate rearranging gene system very important and very interesting point and this is called as the variable lymphocyte receptor. So, what is this VLR gene? This VLR gene is the one which creates diversity. These VLR genes have what are called as rearranging leucine rich uh, repeat modules this L LRR molecules are found even in higher in higher mammalian immune system molecules. So, these LR LRR molecules are actually taken and juxtaposed on to the VLR gene. The VLR gene is actually the protein is not made and not functional, but when there is an infection in these lampreys and hogfishes there is some rearranging mechanism where it takes the leucine rich repeats and puts it together with this VLR gene. Once this juxtaposition occurs 
the gene becomes active and secretes out this protein and this protein is very important for co combating incoming different the kinds of organisms. So, you see you have a rearranging system and many of these members of this rearranging gene like VLRA and VLRB play a very important role in what you call as the B cell immunoglobulin receptor something similar to that or the T cell or so to say they are putative B cells or putative T cells. Then of course, going on to sea urchins you have several such uh, LRRs taking part in immune recognition and IL 1, IL 6 and interferons are cytokines that have been found in early, early vertebrates. So, they have been found earlier on for example, IL 1 has been found in tunicates, catfishes and amphibians, IL 2 is also found, uh, found in, amphib in amphibians. So, you see IL 1 and IL 6 actually first appeared like molecules first appeared in starfishes. So, you see how early that such advanced molecules show their presence. Now, in order to understand this particular concept about what happens in diversification, you we need to understand what is called as the big bang hypothesis. What is this big bang hypothesis? Something that we see in astronomy. So, this big bang hypothesis was hypothesized after looking at the evolutionary scale, keeping in mind to look for the events that happen in the adaptive immune system. What are the important points that happen in the adaptive immune system? Now, what happens during immunoglobulin synthesis? When immunoglobulins are made, you have immunoglobulin gene rearrangement. So, this gene rearrangement takes the help of various different kinds of variable genes, genes takes it out from the from the chromosome or from the DNA and takes it next to what are called as V J, J segment and the V J segment is then juxtaposed onto the constant region uh, gene which happens in the light chain. In, in the heavy chain of course, you have the diversity uh, segments playing a role. So, there is a mechanism or proteins or enzymes are involved in doing this whole process. So, the proteins or the enzymes that are involved in this process are called as RAG 1 and RAG 2 recombinase activating genes. So, without this recombinase acti activating genes there will be no immunoglobulin or no T cell receptor. For example, in humans you find a particular syndrome called as the Omens syndrome. This Omens syndrome is characterized by the lack of rearranged immunoglobulin or T cell receptor molecules. So, you see how important the RAG 1 and RAG 2 genes are for the process of um, uh, doing the recombination. This recombination by RAG 1 and RAG 2 genes is actually mediated because of the presence of certain recognition sequences called as RSS or signal sequences recombinase signal sequences. So, when you look at these they found that they or they hypothesize that as these different kinds of organisms evolved and here you find in the red I have put these this is M Y A stands for million years ago. So, as you evolve and this 2 R stands for whole genome replication. So, during this process at this stage there was some sort of invasion by a transposon. We will come to that a little later on. This invasion of a transposon followed by gene duplication or whole genome duplication is what is supposed to make up this phenomena or hypothesis called as the big bang, which has now of course, has got extraordinary proof and they believe that such a big bang hypothesis did occur. So, what are these transposons? Now, you will see that this is what I just uh, told you earlier and that is that you have to have gene rearrangement they are juxtaposed over here in order to make the final T cell receptor. So, this is the rearranged uh, alpha chain gene these are the leader peptide and on either side of these segments you find the presence of what are called as this RSS okay, or recombination signal sequences. So, you have either a heptamer or a octamer. So, this is also called as a 1223 base pair rule in higher mammals. So, what happens is that these enzymes sit on these recognition sequences. So, they come 
and when they come together after sitting on those recognition sequences, this intervening sequence loops out and is cut out and then the, the genes are juxtaposed. So, you have the juxtaposition of the variable region with the joining segment and that is what is shown over here. This is the RAG gene that is sitting on the heptamer and decamer sequences and then the other RAG gene that is sitting over here. They come together, loop out this intervening sequence and bring the variable region together with the J, J region segments. So, therefore, you see that the RAG 1 and RAG 2 enzymes are very essential to, to make this whole thing loop out and bring them together and connect them together. So, these are the enzymes that are very important and of course, these sequences are also very important. Now, what they have found is that the adaptive immunity with immunoglobulin and TCR this appears suddenly in cartilaginous uh, fishes. What is this cartilaginous fishes? Cartilaginous fishes is the these are the cartilaginous fishes over here. These are ostriches and these are elasmo, elasmo bronchi the bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes. So, you see if you look at this arrow that is where this big bang was supposed to have taken place. So, then these jawless fishes, hack fishes they do not have organized lymphoid tissue nor do they have a primary immune response or memory. So, they have T or B like uh, 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 cells and they propose that the transposable element invaded the primitive immunoglobulin or TCR gene located in the germ cells of early jawed vertebrate ancestors. So, soon after the jawless, jawless soon after hack fishes and lampreys there is supposed to have been an invasion of the germ cell by this transposon. What are this what is this was followed by the segregation of the proteins that are involved in this transposon. So, what is this transposon? Transposon are movable genetic elements. Okay. These are known as jumping genes in maize and which, uh, which uh, obtained a uh, Nobel prize for Barbara McClintock. So, you have these transposons. This transposon contains these transposase enzymes which have the ability to cut out the sequence and to cut out the sequence are these different kinds of sequences which are the recognition sequences. So, here it is called in the early in these transposons they are called as insertion excision sequences. So, you see how they jump from this part to another gene where they insert they cut the DNA of the gene and insert the incision excision sequences. So, they go on jumping from gene to gene. So, these are your transposons. So, if you look at transposons over here the early big bang hypothesis you have the insertion excision sequences and you have what you call as the RAG gene RAG 1 and putative this is the RAG 1 and this is the RAG 2 gene part of the transposon and these are your incision insertion excision sequence or RSS to for short and this is of course, your so called germ cell genome. Now, this transposon because it has the ability to go and uh, insert into into the genome it has inserted over here as you will see over here you have the insertion sequences put into the clip the genomic DNA or the genome and insert themselves into that particular place. So, you see the RAG 1 and RAG 2 genes and after this what happened or supposed to have what happened is that this particular chromosomal DNA that has the RAG 1 and RAG 2 genes and the RSS actually segregated during recombination in the germ cell. So, when they separated the RAG 1 and RAG 2 genes got separated into a different chromosome and the insertion sequences were left and these insertion sequences was the place where you have the immunoglobulin genes coming in together. So, in other words you find this this RAG 1 and RAG 2 has to recognize these two sequences which are incision excision sequences or the so called today's RAG 1 and RAG 2 or RSS recombination signal sequences and these are your RAG 1 and RAG 2 enzymes. So, if you go back to this you will see that the RAG 1 and RAG 2 enzymes actually sit on these RSSs in order to bring about recombination. So, you see this is the big bang hypothesis which is supposed to have occurred very early on in evolution just before the evolution of jawed vertebrates. So, this is the, this a lot of proof has accumulated 
in or, uh, to show that actually this sort of insertion or transposon mutagenesis happened and it, it was probably a very lucky event which has happened only in the germ cell of those jawed vertebrates. So, this is the big bang hypothesis and this actually concludes our lecture on evolution and I have told you about uh, the segregation of the rag 1 and rag 2 from the RSS and after this uh, segregation happened the entire genome actually duplicated once or twice and uh, proof has been obtained for this duplication over the evolutionary studies that people have studied and during this duplication you have all these different kind they, they separated into different chromosomes and then of course, now you know it as rag 1 and rag 2 and you have the heptam the 1223 base pair rule. The rag 1 and rag 2 cannot act if they do not have these RSSs and uh, both rag 1 and rag 2 just like transposons they do not have introns. So, these are some of the features that tell people that actually rag 1 and rag 2 actually came from a transposon. So, in order to summarize this lecture you find that this self non self recognition happened very early on in evolution. This basically was to prevent the colonization of multicellular uh, co colony forming cells uh, to be colonized by other types of cells and therefore, the individuality would be lost and perhaps very important species would be lost during evolution. And this perhaps evolved because of the evolution of cell surface molecules that could uh, react towards each other or recognize each other. Invertebrates have a different system of immunity and they ha their innate Im immunity and associated molecules are geared to agglutinate and enclose pathogen or encapsulate pathogens and their adaptive immunity is uh, is absent as known in mammals or there are several arms of this adaptive immunity which are having common element in mammals but needless to say that the mammalian adaptive immunity is is very very much advanced the ig super family evolved very early and some of these molecules are present in insects, but this is characterized by lack of diversification except for certain known molecules like what we saw the chitin binding variable chitin binding proteins and the uh, variable lymphocyte receptor present in uh, ignata and, and jawed vertebrates later on. Proteins similar to complement proteins are present in insects and one of the most important molecules not covered earlier in this lecture was the presence of polyphenol oxidases in insects. These play a very important role in invertebrates to combat pathogens and to agglutinate them. The antimicrobial peptides of course, evolved very early as, uh, as uh, a component of defense in earlier animals and diversification what started it all was the so called big bang which is represented or um, evidenced by the presence of what is called as variable lymphocyte uh, receptor that is present in jawless vertebrates which are otherwise not having components of the adaptive immunity. Thank you very much.